Hold it, hold still. You hold still too, Stray, don't you? All right, all right. <laughs> Probably hungry, going to get something to eat. Yeah, I know, but um, are you done? I mean, I've been posing like this for like the last three weeks and you're still three not weeks. good. Come on, it's barely been two and a half weeks. We're <laughs> almost there, we're almost there. I just need to... Hmm. Are you sure? I'm not a statue, you know. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a perfectionist when mm. it comes to these things. I like to have everything just right. Okay. I think I'm almost done. I think, I, I think you're going to be happy with this. Really? I think you're going to be very happy with it. Let, wait, wait. Uh, I have to sign it. Oh, that means I can see. Hold on. I'm kind of curious. Oh. Perfect. What? What is that? It doesn't even look like me. Look at it. Look at that. I, I look like a, a man. <laughs> That's why I put the baby in there. Men can't get pregnant. But what, what do you think we need? I don't know. I need like someone who can give me like a real... Hmm. Yeah, you know. Okay. But that's definitely well, understand not understand art. I, you know I'm a beginner when it comes to this. I was just, I was asking you to model for me to, so I could practice. Oh it's not bad for a first try, <laughs> but don't worry. Oh. Help is on the way. Okay. Yes, I do have friends in the art industry, you know. Of course. In fact, one of them is quite famous and legendary mm -hmm. in his own right. Um, before we uh, invite him in here, yes. I'd like to introduce him to our viewers to get him to get to know him a little bit better. Mawan is the first Asian to become the main curator at Documenta, the world's largest contemporary art exhibition. With more than three decades in the world of art, Masande has produced artworks from installations, drawings, digital printing, and even video. Now, earlier this year in November, Masande conducted the cultural speech of the Jakarta Arts Council 2022 entitled Rooted and Creeping, Lumbung as an Economic and Aesthetic Model of Arts Organization, which was inspired by Richa Barnes. Ade describes Art Barnes as a system of community management. And now, help is on the way, I said, He's right? He's here. He is here. Okay. Mas Ade Darmawan, please join us here. Hi, Mas Ade. Thank Hello. you for coming by. Hi. Okay, Hello, let's uh, hide this. I don't want him to see this. Oh, oh wait, <laughs> no, so he's not... You don't want him to. Okay, you know, well, we'll rate, yeah, well, rate it, rate we it. need your 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 yeah. your help here. This I saw it my... already, so. Oh, you did. Okay, so what do you is, think? This <laughs> is my inter. Okay, yeah. See, if she was standing like this, it would look just like her. <laughs> no, it's interesting because you you actually uh, uh, picture something that that people didn't see. Yeah, right. This is my yeah, this is my vision. Exactly. Would you consider okay, this uh, contemporary or abstract? It is contemporary. It, it is, is contemporary. Abstract. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Masadi, let's have a seat yeah, so we can chat you. a little bit more. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, put you right in the middle there. Yeah. See? Okay. Ah, okay. So welcome. Thank you for being here, by the way. Thank you Great. for Always having me. Great. Always wanted yeah. to chat with you. So uh, last June, Ruang Rupa became the art director of Documenta 15 2022. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? How did you get involved with the exhibition? How did that all come about? We did, we did a lot of projects in a collective uh, uh, way and, and, and so on. I think. Oh, look at him. He likes you. I told him oh, to be nice. Look at him. <laughs> and, and we did a lot of uh, projects in our space and also in, in the city and also together collaboration with, with a lot of artists around the world. I think uh, that actually what make things uh, attract uh, uh, people internationally, mm -hmm. that firstly, and then, and then also uh, in the same time, we 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 did collaboration and in, in, in collective practice since 22 years. Mm -hmm. uh, not many uh, collectives have been survived and also constantly doing collective practice. No, Masare, if we're talking about Documenta 15, uh, it recorded a new history. So first curator from Asia, and for the first time ever, Documenta involved a curator from the Global South. You, that would be you. Now, so how do you feel and can this be called a new chapter in Indonesian art? What do you think? Uh, yes, of course, like, like not only Indonesia, we might not represent Indonesia as such, uh, 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 even Global South because, because it's, but like, like Documenta itself or like art world itself, it's very Euro American and Eurocentric. I would you know, like, say so. Yeah. Right, like yes. all the art history that we read, we studied, yeah. it's, it's yeah. basically 
Uh, now kids might know all the uh, big names, uh, uh, European artists' names, but what about Indonesian, let's yeah. say? Mm -hmm. What about Southeast Asian artists? What about African artists? So, art world itself, it's very much Euro American Eurocentric. Okay. And it, that's exactly what Documenta is all about as well. For They started in 55, mm -hmm. and every five years. Documenta is every five years. It's okay. huge in, in one big city. Small city, sorry, but it's just Longer a big than event. the World Cup, <laughs> yeah, between them, right? Yeah, and it's always like, mm, all their uh, artistic directors is always from the Western Hemisphere. Right. Oh. Okay. So only uh, 92, I think, uh, there's one artistic director from Africa. Mm. And, but after that, none of them is actually from uh, Asia or even Indonesia. It's actually none of Indonesian artists ever been exhibited in or invited as an artist yeah, yeah. Okay. in Documenta ever. So, so this is uh, yeah. It's a breakthrough, it, isn't it? It's then? a breakthrough, and then also for, the, and and for, I think like the, the whole world also see Indonesia yeah. and how the art practice uh, here back home, and then also in the same time because we bring Lumbung, so so right. this idea, yeah. So uh, again, like not only are we breaking through in recent years when it comes to music and uh, films mm -hmm. as well, now mm -hmm. the world of art and fashion, and we've mm -hmm. seen that happening as well over the past couple of years now. You mentioned Lumbung, so you brought this concept of Lumbung uh, to Documenta. Can you tell us a little bit about it and how was it received? We're practicing Lumbung as, I mean like Lumbung, when, when I said Lumbung, you know, like as Indonesian. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, you, you know, like, like we have pictures, <laughs> imagery, <laughs> right? yeah, imagery yeah. Yeah. or even act, right, or right. attitude, yes. or philosophy or ideas in, in our head, right? It's, it's, it's a collective. It's a collective or common memories mm -hmm. in, 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 in our head that Lumbung is actually collective governed resources that we share. Mm -hmm. Like everyone is actually having surplus or like having resources and then yeah. collecting in, one, in, in one, one pot or one time and then and collectively it's governed or, or shared. Mm -hmm. So and we, as Ruang Rupa, as also many collectives that struggles <laughs> in <laughs> In Indonesia, we we actually practicing that without calling our practice also this collective resources sharing is actually lumbung. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, but we do that all the time. Like we do it like through our space. You know, like we, we live in our like in our space together. For example, we share our equipments, we share our ideas, and so on. Right. So and then we bring that ideas further to 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 have you know like like more. Uh, uh, conversation mm -hmm. and sharing also about but the similar practice as Lumbung it might not necessarily like exactly like Lumbung but like right. but we have uh, Maya from uh, Mali for example mm -hmm. uh, exactly the same more or less the same like Lumbung right. and then also there is a uh, Minga in, in, in Latin America and, and, and Ubuntu also in, so, in so, South Africa and, and so on. So so we sort of like making this like the whole network of Lumbung practice uh, okay. in a global. Uh, and of course, talking about Global South, many of that is actually connect to more like like a Global South. Uh, Each other, uh, yeah, connected. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much a similar cosmology. Yeah. Right, so how was it received? Uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's received, uh, very, very tense. Oh, really? In <laughs> one way? Because people are really happy, of course, because it's like seeing in Europe, you're like seeing sort of like there is a new model, like new way of working. Mm. And it's actually challenged also old way of working that, that people also already experience how it's actually extractive and exploitative and very much uh, uh, centered while we actually sort of like being more horizontal and non-hierarchical. Non -hierarchical. So systematically, it's kind of like a crash between like two operating systems. All right, so um, as an artist, you often travel abroad for exhibition and other work. Are there typical Indonesian foods or objects that must be brought? And I'll be back one just, second, oh, okay, okay, while you answer that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's totally my family. My, fa my family, every time we need hot sauce right. everywhere we go. Mas Ali, yeah, what about that, this one? Does that. this have a special meaning for you? What is, what is that? it? Gudeg. Ah, good. <laughs> okay, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
good Does that bring back any memories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was study like five years in 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 in, in Jogja. Right. In EC Jogja. In, uh, so, yes, good. That's like like when we yeah late at night and then go out and find like nice good. Look. <laughs> what else have you got? Right. You gotta... I got one more. Might be a little surprise for Mas Adi right here. Surprise for me too. What is it? It's a drum. Uh, oh, oh. It's, it's Stray's drum set. We decided to re-gift it to Masadi. <laughs> What's the story behind the drums? Yeah. Did you play drums? Are you a yeah, I played drums. Play? Did you play drums? I played drum like uh, as a hobby, or were you part of a, a, a uh, hobby? But yeah, playing a band, but not like not really serious. Like, right. like, like that's serious <laughs> enough. Being yeah. part of a band. How long did you do this for? Was it something you I did was, on the side? I started. Uh, I played drum when I was like 13, 14, Beatles and, and, and so on and like seeing my older brother yeah. playing music and then... And, and, and right, so I you have, have a musical side to you too then. That's very Yeah, quite... Uh, I mean like art and music yeah. is very connected. Very interconnected. Yeah, 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 I mean like many friends in Ruang Rupa as well, you know, playing music, uh, like a band like, I don't know, maybe you know, you know, like White Seas in a Couples Company, yeah. The Upstairs, Good Night Electric. It's all sort of like a... Part of the same, under one umbrella. Yeah, 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 like they start in our space. Very much so. That's how I, in fact, I heard about Ruang Rupa. So, uh, we're going to ask you a few more questions. This time, we're going to ask you in a rapid style question. So we're going to give you a couple of choices. I'm nervous. And without it? thinking, <laughs> we just want you to answer okay. and choose one. That's right. Okay, you ready? You can, Yanni, you can start. All right, off. the okay. first one is White Shoes and the Couples Company <laughs> or Good Night Electric. I didn't want to ask this one. This is going to be tough. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. White Shoes. White, White Shoes and the Couples Company. How come? Yeah, why is that? I just want to piece off my friend in Good Night Electric, so. Ah, <laughs> yeah. That way to do it. That's, that's, that'll probably do it. No, but I think I think they, they really grow a lot. Uh, uh, uh. They're both amazing. That's why I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but amazing. Choose. Yeah, they grow. Uh. Is this question just like made it like a few seconds ago after I said good, why it's just a No, it's just a coincidence. You okay. Like that, though, how everything just blends oh, great. seamlessly. <laughs> Interesting. All right, that's, seg that's going to segue us into our next one. Okay, here we go. The Papa versus Tai Lalat. Which one? Aha! Another... <laughs> yeah! I don't want to stump you on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Uh, popo. Popo? Yeah. Okay. Any particular reason? Uh, uh, the instant noodles are good? Or... Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> not only... I think I think he, he expanded it to something else, you know, like... Uh, Evolved. Uh, Evolve, man. You know, like, like it can be also like really political, also mm. at the same time. That's also sure. interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. Last one. Last one. one. We have Agan Harahap versus Anton Ismail. Which one? Oh, this is hard. They're this both three are, great. These three are hard. <laughs> All three of them. Wouldn't be a challenge if it was easy. Anton Ismail. Anton Ismail. Yeah. How come? I think I really respect his. Uh, his uh, again, maybe, maybe maybe the same like like with like my my answer like like Popo. You know, like like they they expand like their uh, their practice outside their comfort, zone. comfort artistic comfort zone. Okay. You know, not only as an artist, you know, but but also as 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 providing space, provide, like like Anton like doing uh, with with class pagi for example, mm. like like uh, like really I don't know, you know. Yes. Like like this class bag, you know, like like really morning class, like yeah. really like really early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Even there's a even there's a class bag in Papua, you know, like like still oh, very really? active. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. expanded. That, also in Georgia and so on. Okay. So it's really like I really respect that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're gonna actually take a short break here, but we still have more with the one and only Adi Darmawan. When we return here on Buddy Talk, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Hey, we're just uh, talking about how comfortable uh, Stray is. Very. And Stray is an indicator, usually, of how nice our guests are. So yep, the nicer they right. are, the more he cozies up to them. Or how nice at the sofa. Yeah, it's, it's my, either you or My belly. <laughs> so, let's talk a little bit about your past. Let's take you all the way back to junior high. Your work, actually, you were a cartoonist at the time. Your work was published in a very popular media at the time, Compass Newspaper. 
at the time, those visualizations or cartoons made a uh, mock, uh, mock fun at the yeah. military. This is something that is often done. We often see, like I remember when I grew up, yeah. used to read the daily paper, there'd always be some kind of artist rendition with some, a little bit of a political message. What was in your mind at the time? Because you were very young, junior high. I mean, that's not it's, even high yeah. school yeah. age. Very gutsy. What made you, yeah. <laughs> what, first of all, what triggered you to even want to create something like that and what was the reason behind it? Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, that was, uh, 1988, so I was 88. Okay. 88, so I was I was 14. Wow. Okay. I was 14, and, and uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, like my father and my mom, like they they arrived in Jakarta like 60s. Okay. Uh, like many many others, <laughs> families start the struggles in, in the in the in, in Jakarta and so on. <clears throat> my, my father was math teacher, mm -hmm. uh, so he actually who taught me to draw because math is a lot of, you know, there is oh, a lot so of drawing. Oh, he actually encouraged your artistic side. He's, he's a good drawing. He's a, he's a, he's a good artist oh. as well. I would have thought he would have wanted you to be an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, so, so he's actually, like, so I learned uh, a lot. But like this, this uh, uh, critiques towards authority already in the family conversation, a lot, you know, from my older brother, from my parents, and and so on. You know, like like they 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 grew up in uh, dealing with with the new order regime and, and so on. So it's coming from from there. You know, like 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 really uh, uh, early. <laughs> like growing up as a young child, then you were very aware of what was going on around you. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's rare at the time. Nowadays, yeah. if a twelve-year-old knows a lot of info, probably they're looking on social media. But at that time, it had to be kind of embedded within you from your family. Yeah, I, I read a lot, and that, that's also in the family. You know, like like books and so on. Like I start to draw. I start to draw quite. Early. I mean, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's special. I mean, it's just like I think everyone, everyone when when their kids, you know. Drawing, so like I do that as well. Except I still draw like a. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to I still draw like a seven-year-old. That's uh, yeah, that's better than me when I was when I was, when I was five. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Bring those and we'll compare them anyway. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's uh, <clears throat> but they encourage me uh, a lot. Yeah, maybe because I'm the last kid in the family. Oh, you were the youngest. The youngest. That's why my name is Ade. <laughs> so, if we're talking about um, the people nowadays, they're very sensitive, right? Now, you as an artist, does it affect you how you you produce your art now? Yeah, I mean, if you're to create like some sort of um, cartoon during 32 years of, of authoritarian. It's it's uh, you know like the censorship you know yeah, like the yeah. control is vertical you know like from the state with their apparatus mm. right but but now it's more like after 98 after reformation it's 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 horizontal actually yeah. it's uh, it's from your peer you know like like uh, uh, we we discuss this a lot also uh, amongst the artists you know like like uh, you you have you really conscious about what the neighbors, what oh, <laughs> neighbors. Right. Right. It's actually from families, from friends, from neighbors, from uh, other organizations, you know, uh, other activism uh, as well. So, so it's more on that. But I think, I think that's. Uh, I hope. I think self censorship is actually the most dangerous because no, because the different. The, the, the state censorship, like the authority censorship, is actually when, like the, the expression is already produced or expressed, mm -hmm. right? The lines are clear. In, in the public and then, yeah. and then they, will, they, they will censor it. But, but self-censorship is actually, it's come, it's censored before expressed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So uh, it is more and more uh, sensitive. Yeah. Now I think it's also I think more conservative in the same time. Yeah. Exactly. So um, now that we've taken off our censorship blinders, we want you to do the same because we pulled up a couple of stories that we want to share with you, and I want to get your honest, transparent take on some of these. We're going to start with this first one. We're up for another challenge, by the way. Our first one. Oh, let's have a look. Okay. So this is um, this is happening 
like everywhere. Uh, in fact, I know oh, now sorry. for a fact that selfie sticks have been banned in a lot of countries. But this is a picture of uh, somebody taking a selfie at a very famous art exhibit. I'm sure our viewers are familiar with this as well. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Because... And what's the damage? Um, I'm not sure about the damage in this particular in this incident, but there obviously has been have been people at the expense of them getting a cool selfie with their friends. Yeah. You know, perhaps doing something they shouldn't be or kind of invading the art space to do to get what they want, yeah. to get Maybe that money shot touching, for instance. Right? Because you, you touching, can't touch anything. Yeah, or being like, behind the barriers, mm -hmm. anything like that. What's your take on this? Because everybody wants to get a good selfie these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, yeah. It's tough actually because more and more art events, as far as I know, as well. You know, like like even even using this selfie craze. What do you call it? Yeah, the phenomenon. Yeah, <laughs> the phenomenon in, into in, into their into their sort of like consideration into how they show their work. Yeah. It's become sort of like a, a attraction towards a uh, for audience uh, as well. I think that's uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not against it. I mean, I mean, just like uh, I did Jakarta Bino as well, uh, few edition uh, before 2017 or 15, I remember, and and that's sort of like 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 the growing of the self. That's when it started, yeah, yeah. around that time. But at, I, in that time, at, we, we try to shift those phenomena into more like so. We ask actually audience uh, not only taking pictures but also comment. Uh, so, so sort of like transform that energy into appreciation rather than you know like being being centered, mm -hmm. a, and and then and then the art itself. You know, like I, I I don't think they they really care about what what is it. But right. I think as but I think that's also a task of like the events of or like even organizer or producers. You know, like like change that energy into something more because it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's there, like people come and they, they really... Perhaps like have a panel instead and open it up for questions. Or... Yeah, or, or, or something, uh, something uh, we ask actually, you know, like, like if there's a selfies or like there's uh, pictures of, of artworks and, and you know, like just like give, give a simple comment. So, and then, and then it's like the discussion in public space or like in public realm is more interesting rather than only just a selfie. Yeah. Exactly. Instead of just saying, hey, it's that this uh, exhibition with the black dots everyone has on their Instagram. I gotta get one too. <laughs> yes, you can get one, but exactly. know your boundaries. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're almost out of time here. So we've got one more question that we're, mm. we want to know. You obviously have a lot of experience, not only in the art industry, but the art industry in Indonesia as well as internationally. Mm. Would you be interested if I one day became president and I asked you to become director general of culture in Indonesia? <laughs> Will you become a president? Oh my god, dare to dream. <laughs> that was right. Oh, what's the question? Uh, would you want to be a director general of culture? Would you want to have a position like that? I mean, obviously, you can implement changes, you can help the art industry as well, but that involves taking on a whole different role than what you've been doing. I, I don't know, I don't think so. I mean, like, I don't think government will be a good or suitable yeah. system. Not for you, huh? For a <laughs> person. Yeah. Or like, like in my head. I mean, like I, I'm, I'm, I love people. I don't think I'm not. I, I think I'm not interested in that kind of yeah. system or structure. Yeah. yeah, that's okay because I don't think Indonesia is ready for me to become president. <laughs> Masade, thank you so much for thank your time. Thank you so much for. Really, it's been great talking to you. Thank really you. Thank you. Great, great, great having me. Can and, I have this? Uh, <laughs> feel free to bring him home if you can pick him up. If you can pick him up, he's yours. It's like Thor's hammer. Oh anyway, God. on behalf of Masade Dharma One, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Buddy Talk. And Yanni, thank you so much for being my model for three long weeks. No problem. You must be very aching and sore. Thank you to Stray and thank you to all of the entire production crew here at Buddy Talk. Don't forget to tune in every Saturday and Sunday night here on C Today for a new episode of Buddy Talk every weekend. My name is Paul Polelli signing off for now. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.